Mr. People, thank you. Now, this revival is a three night revival. We've yesterday we 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 were at the historic uh, chapel, which is on the other side of the campus. It was opening night. Tonight we're here, and tomorrow night we're going to be in this facility. Amen. So we're going to be here at seven o'clock tomorrow night, and also we're going to be um, tomorrow is a closing night, so it's going to be epic. It's going to be really explosion here. Some say amen. I already sense in my spirit where God is taking us, and I'm excited about it. Let's clap for Jesus for that. Uh, if you catch the vision, you run with it. Our vision is lift up Jesus Christ and to bring him to every level of life so you can read our vision. It's inside the bulletin, and our statement of faith is there. For those of you watching online, uh, you can submit your prayer requests live during this broadcast, and we're going to pray for you. Because God is moving powerfully for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I am excited about the hour we are living in. This is a very crucial hour to be alive and to be living in this very, very hour. Now, I'd have liked to use my lapel mic, but if you guys didn't connect it, I'll just work with this. Uh, this is a crucial time to be alive. And what I mean by that is that God could have decided to have you live in a 15th century, 16th century, but he appointed you to be alive during this time, and that's why you were conceived and born uh, by your family, by your, by your parents, to be alive in this time, in this very hour. It's very crucial to give thanks to God. Amen? Before I preach, I'm going to ask my wife to come and greet the church and also greet our online audience and then I'll begin to share the word of God. Let's clap to Jesus for huh? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was really waiting for this revival and before the revival start uh, the Lord just put that on my husband's heart to do a revival and it was, it's been amazing. Amen. I remember uh we used to do this revival after the new year. We would just uh, pack up and then we would travel to Minneapolis. So we used to have the revival in Minneapolis and it's just been amazing. Amen. And so now we're having it here and I couldn't wait for it. There's just something about the new year revival. I was always looking forward to that. I would uh, fly down here uh, for the new year then we would go back to Minneapolis and we'll just spend that whole week in the presence of the Lord. It's just something about it. And I'm just really excited to see that we have it here because it's, it just jump up your, your heart, your passion, your hunger, your soul, you know. Uh, I feel like from the beginning of the year to the end, so many things happened, you know, uh, so many struggle, things that we go through. But, you know, during this time, it's just so personal. I don't know if I'm really explaining it right. You know, there's a time you come to church, you know, you want something from God. You want a healing. You want a deliverance. But there's time is reserved for us to just come and minister to God and seek his face. And I think it's really different. Amen. So if you really open up your heart and you really press in, you'll have an encounter with God, you know, past the every Sunday church, past the routine that we go through all the time. This is a time for us to really press in and, and make it personal. I think this is a different, is making it personal with God. Amen. So it's exciting. It's amazing. Um, I pray that the revival just continue. This is one thing about revival. It just jumpstarts you. It just wakes you up and you just want more. Amen. And that's how the revival started for so many years. And my husband keep adding uh, days after days. And we're still here. We're still going. So you're here. You're in the right place. Just, you know, you're watching online. You may not be able to be here with us, you know, in-house. But the same spirit, the same anointing, the same fire is streaming through. Just open up your heart and say, Lord, I'm going to make it about you. And I'm going to make it personal. And the Holy Spirit is right there to give you that impartation. We're receiving here 
in-house. Amen? Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you can turn with me to Isaiah chapter 60. Are we still live? Thank you. I saw you moving. I thought you interrupted it. So let's, 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 let's cut on a movement. So I'm not distracted. Thank you. As a chapter 60, verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Say amen. Father, we ask you to bless this word. As I speak it to your children, they will hear it and arise to it. Shine your light in Jesus' name. And the people say it. Now, God is not finished with you. The system may be putting you in a class. They classified you as a denomination, a religious, or a certain income level. First class, second class. Middle class. Some of you, they even classified you as retired. But God has not told you to retire. The Bible said the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So there is no retirement. You graduate from this life to the life in glory. Somebody say Amen. The title of my message tonight is God is not done with you. Let's clap to Jesus for that. The Bible say in verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Our brains and our thinking limits God continuously because of what we allow to intake. What's our intake? What we process through our thinking. Because our minds are always picking up on things. What we see on television, what we hear people say influences us. Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say I am? Everybody had something to say that was completely off. And who do you say I am? Peter said Messiah. Jesus said the flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my father in heaven. The battle is not the fact that cannot, God can't give you victory because God has given you victory. The battle is whether you can receive the victory that God has given you. So is your mind willing to be renewed? Can the flesh be put to sleep? So you can crucify it. Well, that's what I meant to say. So you can receive by faith what God has in store for you. This awakening is a supernatural awakening. God is resurrecting the greatness that he has embedded in you. Now the word is before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. God knew us before our parents even were formed. So he said before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Now you may say, well, uh, I'm aware that God knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. But why was I born in the third world? Why was I born in America? It says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. Before thou cometh forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. Your assignment and your purpose was defined before you were formed in your mother's womb. 
The scripture about your life was written before you formed your mother's womb. So God is not done with you. It's the devil that has put you into a zone of limitation. There are spiritual prisons and dungeons where the enemy lacks up people. Your purpose cannot be arrested. Come on, say hallelujah to that. The devil cannot arrest your purpose. Neither can he put your assignment to sleep. Because God writes the assignment. Can the devil put God to sleep? No. So the devil can tell God what to do. Your mantle, your assignment, your purpose is God given. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Oh my goodness, I love this service. And I'm not going to keep you long because I know we got another night tomorrow. So I'm going to take it, uh, you know, not so late. We're gonna, I'm going to give you some few things. Please write them down. It says Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. It was an unexpected end. So when we pray, we already purpose in our mind what we want or what we expect. So you ask God to give you a raise, but you, in your mind you expect two dollars. Above your regular pay per hour. So your mind imagines a certain measure of raise, but yet God wants to raise you, not just in hours, but also in the ability or the influence or the position. So God wants to put you in a place where you influence is beyond your position. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. So it has to do with your mind. So because God is not done with you, you are going through some training right now to prepare you for the future. God gave us a word. He said there is peace in God. As I was worshiping God on a piano, he dropped that in my spirit. There is peace in God. The peace that God gives to us is a peace that passes all understanding. The storms in life cannot put that peace out. Why did Jesus sleep while the sea was raging? He that keepeth Israel does not sleep, nor slumber. He was at peace. And the disciples said, Master, don't you care we perish? What did he do? He rebuked the storm. When you are at peace, you will hear God's word and you'll act on his word promptly. Someone said, God is not done with you. Now said, God is not done with me. So the Bible said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. To arise and shine means you step out of tradition, you step out of religion, you step out of public opinions. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Now, I woke up one time and uh, the Lord spoke to me and said America is going to be okay. That's the time that they're saying things are going crazy, inflation, a threat of a war from China, several things were going on. But I had in my spirit, America is okay. I just had it so loud. Now my wife was sleeping, my baby was sleeping, and it was quiet. But I had it so loud, America is going to be okay. Somebody say amen. Come and clap with Jesus for that. So I had to decree that. Then the other time, they were saying there's going to be a nuclear war. Even the president of America said, we're so closer to a nuclear war, worse than it was during Jimmy Carter. God told me to declare no nuclear war. Now, you, you, you think about it. The president of Russia is threatening to use nuclear. The president of America is saying, we're so close to nuclear war. God told me to declare no nuclear war. 
So I had to decree that. Somebody say amen. So I decreed that. When I decreed that, eventually, after a few weeks, days, probably about a couple of weeks, maybe 10 days to 14 days, the president of America came and said, no nuclear war. Because in the spiritual realm, there was a shift. There was a shift. While the church is still here, there is work to do. We have to win souls to Christ. We have to call in the harvest. We have to gather the breakthrough. Someone say amen. We have to populate heaven. Our mindset has to change. God is not done with you. There's some things he wants to do in your life. To deliver you. To bless you. The instruction from God is occupy till I come. So unless God calls you home. Amen. So you graduate to another level. Because we were created to worship God. But also within that instruction there is the dominion put. God gives you children. Raise them up in a God's way. That's your assignment to raise them up. Amen. God has put the jewel in your possession to raise them up. Not the school system. Amen. But you. To teach them the values, the morals, the, the, about life, the, the, the purpose, everything. It's your responsibility. It says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. It doesn't surprise God when you see darkness all over the earth. What is happening on earth now? Wars, rumors of war, perversions. Five cops were arrested because they killed a man. It's all over the news. They beat the man and they're wearing uniforms, but they were rude or they were arrogant and they hurt and killed this young man. So there's protests because these officers did not behave in the caliber of their uniform. So it is causing a lot of animosity. That's darkness. When you see perversions being forced on little kids in elementary school, thank God for the governor in Florida who has stood up to Disney and a walk agenda and said, not in Florida. Can I hear an amen to that? Yes. This is not about the political party. It's about being in the right mind to say no. You're not going to sexualize our kids. Some say amen. We send kids to school to learn about geography, about science, mirth, not perversion. Some say amen. So they, 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 they restrict and place hectic fines on these perverted people or teachers. It's your responsibility to be able to instruct your children in the ways of the Lord that they should be able to follow. And no wonder Florida has become the most state that people are moving to from all over the country and people coming from Canada all over trying to get some property in Florida because there is sanity. But you don't understand, it didn't just happen like that. Sometime in 2006 on Swinton Avenue, a revival broke out. Come on, shout hallelujah. Uh -huh. It broke out in August in 2006 on the 13th, somebody said hallelujah. For over a hundred days, we gathered and prophesied and cast out devils and saw people delivered, HIV removed, the dead raised, cancers dissolved, blind eyes opened, several miracles. Since 2006, we gathered every night and cried out to God. Somebody said hallelujah. The services went on for 10 hours, 5 hours. You all remember those nights. Some will say hallelujah. We went on night after night. Some will say glory. And in 2020, on this platform, in this building, I prophesied and I give God glory. When the Lord spoke to me and said, you reign in Florida. And I prophesied and I told you that Florida is going to become a rescue state. People are going to run to this state for freedom. Some will say hallelujah. They'll come from California. They'll come from other nations to run to Florida because they want to escape oppression. And we have seen this since the pandemic. 
Only, okay, imagine it, 2021, 18 million Americans visit, more than Americans, visited the state of Florida. 18 million. Now, the statistics for, statistics for 2022 have not come out yet. I might release them tomorrow. But 2021, 18 million people visited the state of Florida. And if you go check the statistics and records, this is the most state people are moving to. Now, you know, some people really don't want to pay attention to stuff like that. Well, I don't know what's going on. Hey, they have to enlarge the 95 because it's, it's too crowded. So they have, to, they have to increase lands. They have to increase what? Lands. And complexes are popping up everywhere. This was prophesied in this, on this pulpit right here. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Nothing just happens. God puts his prophets and apostles in position to speak the mind of God, to speak the plans of God, to speak the oracles of God, to speak the dynamics of God into the atmosphere. We have to do that. Why? Because if God was done with Florida, it would just be like New York where Cops are being attacked by machetes. You can't get on a, on a train in New York because you're afraid of your safety. Even a famous rapper from California ran out of L.A. to come to Florida because, say, hey, I was about to get a gun. I said, let me move to Florida where there is peace. Come on, clap to Jesus for that. It's happening. It's happening right here. We see it coming. Now, they're not just coming to Florida to get apartments and live here. No, they're coming here so they can get to test the glory. Hallelujah. They can get to test what God is birthing. What God is birthing. The kingdom of God is going to extend. Now, Florida is not only becoming a place where people are running to, but the government and the structure is setting an example for other states. Not only in Florida, but other nations setting an example how things can operate where people have freedom to make decisions. Now, don't look, I'm not saying the governor is perfect and angel, no, but he has a better brain and a better decision making. And he cries out to God and we pray for him. And by the way, you know, let me tell you something here for your own information. This is not the work of a man, but the Holy Ghost. I saw it. I saw it. Somebody say, amen. I what? I saw it. Even when God held back those hurricanes that were supposed to destroy this land, it was because we prayed. Not because some geniuses increased the levees or used some special mechanism to push the hurricane somewhere. No, prayer. It was prayer. Somebody say, amen. Yes, last year in September and coming to October, the hurricane was supposed to come here. And we prayed away. It was supposed to come here. It was supposed to hit this place. And we prayed away. God told me, said, no. We decreed. It never came here. So what is this window? The Lord woke me up and showed me. The harvest is big. We have to call that harvest in. We have to go after the harvest. There's a lot of people that don't know Jesus. We need to go after them. And win them to Christ. Some say, hallelujah. They're looking for the answer. And Jesus is the answer. Every one of you is a laborer. From the youngest to the oldest. From the little one to the oldest. You are a laborer. Your purpose and assignment is bigger than you paying your mortgage. And paying your rent. And paying off your student loan. And taking your children to daycare. They, everybody can do that. But your purpose is bigger than that. What is happening behind the scene? God is giving you a test of his glory and training you to become a vessel that he can operate through to touch those that are suicidal, that are depressed, that are hopeless. God is ready. But are you? He is ready, but are you? He woke me up and showed me where we hold service Sunday morning. And he showed me the harvest that come in and the workers were not to be found. Because they show up two hours late. You need to wake up. If you still have to pray about whether you're going to go to church, you need some serious deliverance. 
The harvest is ready, but the laborers are what? Few. Someone said, Lord, have mercy. They said again, Lord, have mercy. The word is arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory. The people are going to see the glory on you. They're going to see what the glory on you. We never, I never forget, we had a basketball game, and one of the basketballers went to make a layup. He fell, and he would have been paralyzed because of the way he fell. And the Lord told me, go lay hands on him. I lay hands on him on a basketball court. It was somewhere in Pampe Park. I lay hands on him and I decree that he will not be paralyzed. Somebody say amen. The ambulance came and they took him to the hospital and they checked everything was fine. Everything was what? The glory can be released in a flea market even at your job. We had a guest speaker who came to speak here, Apostle Robert Henderson. He was speaking in our service. And then I was speaking, I picked him from the office, his hotel, drove by our office. And as we were heading to come over here, uh, we saw an accident. Somebody had been hit by a car and the, their body was laying right there on the street, not responding, motionless. I believe it was on a bike, something. I got out of the car, went there, spoke life on him, and the emergency came, found him no more. God raised somebody back to life right there. You say, how possible is that? We can move in the supernatural. You got to be ready to move in the supernatural. It comes by instruction. God is preparing you for a moment it might be at a family reunion. Now, I'm not talking about just raising that. I'm talking about business idea. God is going to drop a business plan in your mind. And you launch that business. And it will be Facebook and Apple. They began in a garage. It's, Facebook had an idea about linking people up. Now it's a multi-billionaire in a little backyard on a small computer. Apple began in a garage. Just an idea. But those people, they don't, they, they don't have Christ. What about you who is in Christ? Take the limits of God. It could be you or your children or people God's going to bring within your influence. Some will say hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 19. Let me read this. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Why is it difficult to believe that God can lift a standard against a hurricane? Against the walk agenda. He can lift up a standard against the perversions. He can lift up a standard against all this defilement. There's a young man Sid Roth sent him to come to my ministry when I was doing work in Minneapolis. He's an American. He got into Satanism and he was deeply into witchcraft. And he had gone to many churches to help him. They couldn't help him. And they sent him to come to me. And he told me that he could shape change into different animals in the spirit. So I looked at this kid Maybe around 21, between 18, between 18 and 21. Deep in witchcraft covenant. Now, you hear about the things in Africa, in Haiti, South America, Mexico, but not in America at that level. So I looked at him. <laughs> and he was, I was just relaxed. He thought I would freak out and be like those other preachers. They get scared when they hear about stories like this. I was just relaxed. I said, yeah, well, this, this God can handle. This is just a piece of chicken. <laughs> Somebody said, hallelujah. I cast the devil out of him in the name of Jesus, and he was set free. Just right there. Come on. Go in Jesus' name. Pop. Yeah, don't need to worry about it. No more changing shapes. Get back to who God made you to be. In the name of Jesus, young man. You mean I'm free? I said, you're free. Huh? I said, yeah, you're free. Can never try to change. Somebody say hallelujah. 
I never forget when I just came to Florida here, one of the volunteers that was helping, uh, she was going through deliverance. Her arm began to change. Now you understand how they're deeply involved in witchcraft and in, in some, some people are deep in deep covenant. The arm began to change. The fingers disappeared and was turning into some other weird type of thing. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to turn to something else. I cast the devil out. It went back to normal right there. Come on, clap at Jesus for that. When the glory comes, listen to this. You see, A. A. Allen cast devils out. You hear in America here, things came out of people like frogs. Yes, it's, it's A. A. Allen Meddings. He was one of the major revivalists in America. And then there came the, the time where you, know, you didn't hear about deliverances and miracles. So people began to put the, put the thing back, 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 back. Oh, that doesn't happen. No, it happens. People have demons, just they haven't been exposed. The name of Jesus is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. People are hungry. What makes you think that people are happy? They're depressed, they're suicidal. Fentanyl is killing people. Fentanyl is worse than uh, the drugs they put in, uh, you know, when they're going to give people surgery, worse than that. It's, it's just dragging up people. People are suicidal, depressed. What makes you think that they're, gonna, they're happy? They're not happy. But we have the answer. And who's the answer? Jesus is the answer. God doesn't want to take you home. No. He wants you here on earth so he can walk through you. You got to see that God's assignment for your life is bigger than your comfort zone. He says, be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We have to finish strong. The church was born strong. It's going to be ruptured strong. We have to finish what? Strong. Someone say amen. Before I finish, so shall they fear the name of the Lord, not the name of a president, not the name of a country, not the name of a business icon, but they shall fear the name of who? The Lord. Who? The Lord Jesus from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Then he said, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against them. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and to them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. You have not seen all the goodness of the Lord yet. You have begun to see it, but God and done. We have to enlarge our territories. We have to change how we think. This room is too small for the harvest. The Lord took me around and gave me a spin like a, a glimpse into the future. This room is too small. We're going to have events that will not be able to fit in a building. We're going to have to mount them outside and close off streets and pay them, pay the city. Cash. Come on, clap to Jesus. Don't. If the state fair, the state fair that's going on now, it, is, it goes on for how long? Two weeks? How long is the state fair? Two weeks, one month, I don't even know. What you see at State Fair is nothing compared to what God is about to do. We have to embrace it, we have to prepare. Can I do that? It's not about the crowds, it's about the impact. Yeah, we can close off streets. We're gonna close off streets. We did that before. We're gonna close off streets. We're gonna close off streets and engage. Somebody say amen. In effective demonstration of the power. Once the streets are closed off, people will come there, buy food, get prayer, get delivered. Say amen. We'll mount up. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's some things that I can't talk about right now. But we're going to close off streets. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. We're going to close off streets and do some kingdom work. You say, is that possible? Yeah. We know who to contact in the city. And we know how to go about it. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Because the work that God is doing is so powerful. And you have to change how you think. God is bigger than your pocketbook. God is bigger than your retirement plan. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Some of you need to stop grieving and mourning about the past and things you lost in 2020. Oh, I wish I had done this this way in the past life. Well, you're still in this life. Somebody say amen. Can I do that? Glory to God. Forget about the past. God is doing something new. It says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. We're going to have presidents come to attend our service. I said, presidents are going to come to attend our services. That's ashes. You got to be ready to welcome presidents and know how to set up a green room for presidents. Somebody say hallelujah. And, not, and don't panic and ask them to sign an autograph. No, just prepare to handle the business. Somebody say hallelujah with professionalism. You missed a place to clap to Jesus. <laughs> Lift up thine eyes as I finish. Round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou, then thou shalt see and flow together and thy heart shall fear and am enlarged because the banners of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee and a mountain of camels shall cover thee. Dromedaries of the Midian, Ephra, and all from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold incense and they shall show forth the praise of the Lord. You haven't seen money yet. When they tell you to give an offering, you get upset sometime. He said, well, I gave last week. What do I have to give again? No, give. Every time there's an opportunity to give what? Give. Because the harvest that is coming is bigger than your paycheck, is bigger than your retirement, is bigger than your business investment. When the Gentiles come, they're not only going to come empty, they're going to come loaded. The multitude of camels shall cover the dromedaries of the median effort. And all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praise of the Lord. And all the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nabioth shall minister unto thee. And they shall come up with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Before I finish. Retire from murmuring and complaining. Retire from putting limits on God. Retire from stress. You should never be stressed again. You should never be offended again. Somebody say hallelujah. You say, but I live in a human body. I'm human. Offenses going to come, but don't take them. Amen? Don't you take offense. Let it go. Somebody cut in front of you, traffic? Let him go. Where they're going to? They don't know. They don't know where they're going. Somebody say hallelujah. They are rushing. Where they're going? Nowhere. Jesus is the only way. Somebody say hallelujah. The, the person you offended at don't even know what they're doing. A demon came on them to make them do something stupid. So why are you holding that in your heart? Let it go. So the demon cannot be able to torment them. And also to torment you. Somebody say hallelujah. What if they know what they're doing? Still you forgive them because they're in the flesh. No flesh can glory in his presence. And I, I want to say this. The purpose of God cannot be stopped. The assignment of God cannot be suspended. God's purpose for your life cannot be stopped and his assignment for your life cannot be suspended. The only thing that the devil can do is to distract you. Mary was pregnant without Joseph's knowledge. He found out that she was pregnant. He wanted to put away an angel showed up and said, don't you put her away. For she's pregnant by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God was right there to warn Joseph not to make a mistake. Do you know Sarah in the Bible? 
there was an assignment for her to carry Isaac. The devil attacked her body. Frustration because she could not get pregnant. And she was getting old. Very old. And she was concerned that, hey, I got no child. My maid could help me. She struck a deal with her husband. The child was born, but strife came in at home. When we make things happen in our strength, they wear us down. They cause frustration. God doesn't need your help. He needs your praise. I said, God doesn't need your help. He needs your praise. What you make happen in your strength will wear you down. But when the Lord visited Abraham and they prepared him a meal, the blessing manifested because Sarah had the assignment, but the enemy wanted to wear her out. Because they could not wear out the assignment. The devil cannot stop God's assignment for your life. He cannot. Because the assignment is ordained by God. It comes with this package. God has enough resources to order, to handle what he has ordered and what he expects. But let him take care of it. You put your faith in God and trust him. And he will take care of it. Someone say hallelujah. Can I do that? Someone say Lord teach my hands to prosper. Teach my hands to war. Teach me to do your thing, your will, your way in Jesus' name. So what happened is that when Sarah and Abram were frustrated, they activated Haggai and gave birth Ishmael. It never worked out. So God had to intervene to help Sarah out. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. We cannot do church like everybody. No. We're going to do church like the book of Acts. Somebody say hallelujah. Can I remember that? We have to be ready for that. And that's why you're being equipped. That's why I'm preaching under apostolic authority tonight. Because I want you to be equipped and to be prepared for what God is about to do. Somebody say amen. Can I remember that? So we have to enlarge our territory, change how we think, and be empowered, be equipped. You're being equipped to function in the kingdom with dominion and authority. So the Lord wants to teach you one which is a thousand, two which is what? 10,000. We triumph in humility. We don't entertain frustration. Neither do we embrace discouragement. Praise breaks heaviness. You don't carry sorrow. You carry praise. And you give this praise to Jesus. You're carriers of God's glory. The Lord inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. Amen. So when frustration is gone, you can hear from God. When you're frustrated, you can't hear from God. When frustration is gone, you can hear from God. So start hearing from God. You wake up in the morning, lift your hands and worship him. Like do in the morning, idea is going to come. Fresh inspiration, fresh idea. We drop in your spirit. God will give you names. God will give you addresses. God will give you a glimpse. Show me the future. And he showed me what the enemy was trying to do. And that's we can't afford to be destructive. We can't really get back to the dimension of faith and expectation. Jesus rebuked the storm. When the bread was not enough, he told the disciples, sit the people down. The disciples said, Shh, send people away. Jesus, I can't send them back hungry. Sit them down. He took the little bread he had and a fish, gave thanks and multiplied. Somebody said, it's not my strength. It's not my source that will facilitate God's provision, it is supernatural banks. You miss a place to clap to Jesus. <laughs> Lift your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I repent and I renounce all unbelief. I repent and I renounce all unbelief. I am sorry, Lord, for doubting you and having unbelief. Forgive me for caring, fear, doubt and unbelief in me. I embrace your word. I embrace your promises. I embrace your instruction. From today, I refuse to be worried about anything. I put my faith and my trust in you. I believe in supernatural provision. I believe in supernatural deliverance. I believe in supernatural glory. I believe in 
your blessing overflowing in your provisions overflowing lord take me deeper in your presence in your glory in your power give him the best clap offering now i'm talking about supernatural debt cancellation i'm talking about supernatural provision i'm talking about dynamics that are going to manifest in your lives God is going to do things supernaturally. They will not require your strength. They will require your obedience. They will not require your intellect. They will require your faithfulness. God will not depend on your flesh. Neither has he ever depended on your flesh. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, that's Jesus. Jesus did a lot of things within three years that could have taken people 10,000 years could never accomplish. In one day, your life can shift from 20 years of bondage to a complete turnaround in one hour. God can shift your life within one hour and you can't even remember the things you went through. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Because you're full of joy. Because the joy of the Lord is what? Our strength. You don't have to worry about anything. Can I do that? Repent for worrying. Ask God to forgive you for worrying. Ask God to forgive you for murmuring and complaining. Ask God to forgive you for doubting him. Because in heaven there is no doubt. In heaven there is no lack. In heaven there is no fear. Apart from the fear of the Lord. Somebody say amen. God has an overwhelming package for you. God has completely catered for every second of your life. Your future is catered for. Do you know the angels? The Bible said they're ministering spirits. Make sure that you don't even dash your foot on a stone. When you drive on a highway, the angels watching over you, over your children. Someone say hallelujah. While you're sleeping, they're patrolling your house to make sure that no harm comes upon you. Someone say hallelujah. When you open to read the Bible, they celebrate. When you begin to say hallelujah, whether there is instruments or drums or no, God still rejoices in your singing. Hallelujah. You may sing in key zebra. It sounds like the best choir in heaven. Because God is pleased with your heart sacrifice. It is coming from your heart. And that's what blesses God. God says, you see my daughter? You see my son? You see them right there? They're praising me. They're focusing on me. They're thinking about me. They love me. Hallelujah. And he says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The devil is a liar. You know the devil is jealous of you very jealous because God cares about you. Even the very hair on your head is numbered. God knows what number is here. If God knows the amount of hair you have on your head, he knows how much money you have in your bank. He knows how much money you owe. He knows what you desire to do. Someone said earlier, trust him. Can I matter that? Trust him. Why? Because he has a plan and his plan is bigger than Uncle Sam. His plan is bigger than all, all your dreams. Let it be. That's why the Bible said clearly, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I said, goodness shall follow me. Tomorrow, goodness. Because of the assignment, you're pregnant. Coming from his precision love. Just like nothing can separate you from the love of God, nothing can separate you from the blessing of God. The blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow. The sorrow you felt came from the enemy, came from the mindset and the culture and the tradition. The Bible said tradition makes the word of God of no effect. So the things you're suffering with, they came from the natural but God says, take your eyes off the storm. Take your eyes off the circumstances and fix your eyes on Jesus. His protection is powerful. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say favor, 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 favor. Say it again. Favor, 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 favor. It's a process. You see, favor comes in dimensions. It comes what? Mary found favor. Now, tomorrow I'll touch on this because of time. I'm, I, I got to cut right now. 
But Mary found favor before the Lord because she was not the only virgin in the land. But Mary found what? Favor. Now the favor she found with the Lord gave her the opportunity to carry Jesus in her womb. Which is the father's assignment. And then that very favor that Mary found, the Lord just showed me something else. Is what activated the angel to come and warn Joseph not to put her away. Because the jealous of man would have not taken that. But the favor of God penetrated and the barrier and the Lord facilitated provision for her needs. So she would not come under reproach while she carried the Messiah. Some will say hallelujah. There's some things that God is going to do for you that your enemies counted you out. But God is going to shift. And the very people that try to destroy you are going to carry your package to deliver it to you. I don't know whether you heard what I just said. The very people that were trying to destroy you are going to deliver your package to you. And they say, I cannot hate you anymore. I can't fight you anymore. I cannot. For some reason, I don't know what was wrong with me. I cannot fight you anymore. Here is your blessing. I can't hold it anymore. I cannot fight you anymore. My mind changed. My attitude towards you changed. I used, I, I, back in the days, I could not stand you. But now, you, you, you're such a blessing. Somebody say hallelujah. Something is about to happen. I'm talking about in this very year. In this very year, there is a shift coming. The Bible says, if a man's ways please God, he will, even, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. Their enemies that have been trying to destroy you, they're going to change how they talk about you. They're going to start to bless you. Why? Because they don't understand your God. God is about to change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. They try to paint you as a bad person, but God is going to change it. A perfume of favor is about to blow on you. There is a perfume of favor that is coming. Those that were fighting you, they are about to come and praise your God. Because your God is so big. Everywhere they, they tried everything. It failed because God is bigger than human nature. Somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. Mary found favor, may you found favor. Hallelujah, receive the favor, the same favor that Mary found. May you receive favor, receive that favor right now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. God is giving you favor. God is giving you favor because of the assignment. You're pregnant with the assignment of God. There's a purpose of God in your life. God is giving you favor. He's unlocking mysteries. He's unlocking doors. He's, oh yeah, there's a shift coming. I said, there's a shift coming. Doors are opening for you. I said, doors are opening for you. Doors are opening for you. In the spirit, they're breaking loose open. Barriers are being removed. Hallelujah. The angels are being released. God is releasing his cherubims. Oh yeah, I had to pray for God to send his cherubims to protect the glory in the house because of the warfare. We got to activate them. Some of, you, some of you need activation right now. Some of you need some reinforcement. Some reinforcement. God's angels to come and battle the things. Hallelujah. There's a shift coming. Some of us, I receive it now. I receive it. I receive it. Oh God, I give you praise. Close your eyes. Father, thank you for tonight. And I bless you because you're opening doors that no man can close. You're not unlocking a season of favor, a season of blessings, a season of protection. You're unlocking favor, the unseen favor. You're unlocking breakthroughs and blessings that we have not seen. You're shifting things in our lives. You're unlocking mysteries. You're unlocking dimensions of glory that we have not seen. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, your protection will come upon your children. Your favor will come upon your children. And even those that are discouraged, may they be encouraged. Those that feel like giving up, give them a surprise of their lifetime. Today, we repent of murmuring and complaining and doubting and fear and limiting you. Father, we take all the limits off you. And we declare that have your way. Do your thing. Because we are ready to be used by you. We want to see your glory. Father, thank you because I obeyed you to do this revival like you spoke to me. 
Last year, do it. I obeyed you and you opened up for us. Now you're shifting things into a new dimension of thinking. We declare that your favor is upon us, your glory is upon us, and we can see things in a different way. And we vow to give you glory. And the people said, now if you're watching this broadcast, you don't know Jesus, or you're in this room, you don't know Jesus, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me, I repent, renounce my sin, renounce my iniquity, remove my name from the book of death, write my name in the book of life, I accept in my heart as my Lord and Savior, I am born again in Jesus' name. And the people said, give them the best clap offering. Hallelujah. Beni swali tane. Beni swali tane. Chris Viva. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Something good is coming my way. I said something good is coming my way. Do you receive it? How many of you sense it? Oh my God. How many of you sense it? It is coming your way. It is coming your way. It's coming your way. We're going to receive an offering right now. I'm going to ask the ushers to help us out. They're going to give you an offering envelope and you can place your offering in there. Also have a prayer card where you can write your prayer request. You can write your prayer request on the prayer card. Whatever you desire, write it down. We're going to pray for you. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. We have giving information on a screen. Can you pop it up on the screen, please? Those who are watching online so they can know what to do. How they can give. Thank you so much. Father, we give you praise. 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 You're writing a check right to Pi Evangelism. On those of you that want to give by Visa or MasterCard, there's a credit card machine we have available. We also have uh, a credit card form. So if you want to give by a credit card machine, they have it available. If you want to give by a credit card form, they'll give it to you. If you want to give by text giving, it's 612-688-4473. And those of you that want to give by Venmo, it's power underscore evangelism. If you want to give by text giving, you can give 612-688-4473. And those of you that want to give by... Uh, Cash up, it's Apostle Sally. There's too much fire in the heavens. There's no physical fire here. Relax. Hallelujah. That happened before when I was at a Sheridan Hotel in Minneapolis speaking at this uh, conference. And then, you know, the alarms went off. The fire marshals came. They couldn't find the fire. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So don't worry about it. There's no fire here in the natural. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If you have a prayer request, please write it down. For 2023. 
If you're watching online, you can give you the give information you see. Can I get a pen? Father, thank you and bless you for this moment you've given to us. We obey you. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. If you're writing a prayer request, write it down by faith and believe God to bless you as we pray for you. God's releasing a greater measure of blessing according to your faith. Holy offering as we pray. Father, we ask you to bless the seed, bless the sower, rebuke the devourer in Jesus' name. We thank you to bless you in Jesus' name. Just bring your offering and drop it in that bucket right here. God bless you. Are you ready for prayer? Rise up on feet. I'm going to pray for you before we dismiss the service. The fire of God is here. Something is coming your way. He is that makes me white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 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 Rosakaya manda kata hata. Reseke ya naramamama. Zokota kakata. Zekeke ne makanta raba. Ile bakokoto sakanta. Yeke kete de mama mama mazanda zeke kete ke yada mama mama lele kete kete riri da zoro ko yahanda zeke kete kete riri riri za zoko toru ya baba kanta ra mama zeke kete de baba baba bobo zoko ya mama mama yike kete de mama mama your glory your power seke yanda ra mahaka zoya kanta ra hayama o seke yanda ra mama. Jesus. Begin to pray for that fire to come on you. Ask him for fresh fire. Ask him. You have overcome the grave. Your glory seals the high. 
Zikiki Iken Tahara Kata Zikiki Tere Mama Reteke Kaya Mama Shire Kara Kanta Ile Kente Kere Ma Lala Kanta Reteku Yabaka Zeke Kere Mahandara Ma Raka Tabu Soku Yamahandara Ike Tere Maka Zeke Rike Tere Mama We need a fresh anointing Lord commission us Commission us to the nations Shift our lives Shift our focus Shift our thinking Shift our understanding Deliver us from limitations. We repent for doubting you. glory we need your power we need faith we need restoration we need life we need life Jesus 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 Marasike ya namakaha ile mosakanta Manta kaya mama, manta katara babuzo, yeke kete de mama mama, lakante masoya mama. So fresh anointing, I receive it. Talk to him, ask him for the fresh anointing. Ask him for fresh anointing. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing. Receive it now. Receive it. Receive the fresh anointing. Receive it now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the fresh anointing. Thank you. Jesus. 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 I'm telling you. Jesus. We need you more than yesterday. We need you more than yesterday. I'm telling you. We need you more than yesterday. We need you more than yesterday. That's all you need is Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. A fresh fire, a fresh glory, a fresh fire, a fresh glory, a fresh fire, a fresh glory, a fresh level of fire, a new dimension, a new dimension. So Lord, take me to a new level of thinking, perception, focus, a new level, a new level, pressing. Press it, press it, press it, press it, take an extra minute and press it, press it, press it, Jesus we give you glory, Jesus we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you glory, we give you praise. Mante kiri ma santa kara kutu yema eriri kiki kiri ma mama mama sala la kaka tara babu zunturu yema baba la 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 kaka tara babu zunturu yema rata kaka ya mama la kata kata ra mama take the blessing 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 take it now take it take it take it. Take it. Thank you. Take it. Para te sekeya na kanta rabo bosoya mante de ketere mama sonturu ya baba rata pasoko ya mama mama rata kata kata rabo bosoya masaka tara ma make ketere mama mama seke ketere mama mama seke ketere mama 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 seke ketere mama mama rata kaba mama ye ketere mama mama reke teke pra mama seke ketere mama mama Raka papu santa, mande ketere mama mama mama, ya ketere mama zeketere, rata mama musu, raka tama mama mama, zeketere kia mama, ya ketere baka peraba, raka papa musu, ya kenda ketere baka tama mama, raka papa saka tama mama mama, raka papa ra, rata kapa papa papa, zeketere mama mama, press it, press it, 
press it and press it. Is the name above all names. I want everybody that is dealing with fear. You're afraid of the unknown or something. Come stand here quickly. Fear is blocking you. Run out of your seat. Come here. Hand of Jesus, what a powerful name it is. Ask him to deliver you from well, here. Nothing can stand against. Ask him to deliver you from here. If you're dealing with any kind of fear, step forward. Jesus. A powerful name. Fear is a roadblock to where God is taking you. Oh, Lift your hand to Jesus. Jesus. Lift your hand to Jesus. Oh. Lift your hand to Jesus. I sing hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You have won Thank the you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have won it all for me. Thank you, Jesus. Death could not hold you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the real Thank you, Jesus. King. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you are. Thank you, Jesus. You're seated in majesty. You are the risen King. Say, Jesus, deliver me from fear. Oh, I sing it up. Deliver me from fear. Hallelujah. Deliver me from fear. I receive boldness. I receive boldness. I receive boldness. Yes, you have. I receive boldness. I receive boldness. 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 You have won it all. Boldness. I reject fear. I reject fear. I embrace your word. I embrace your presence. I embrace your glory. Yes, you I embrace the Shekinah. I step out of doubt. 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 Jesus, increase my faith. Increase my faith. You are the reason. Seated in majesty, in majesty, you are the risen King. Particularly, get a hakata hata rabakoto, jeke ketere bakada la la raba, yele reke keke keke ketere mama, thank you, Lord, rotoko koloria babaka pakata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rakutukuya mama ma, siki kete de mama ma. Rakatara baba bubu ya kaka, randa kaka katara baba baba bubu zuri. Rokutosha kaya mama, lakatara mama mama, ziki kete de mama mama. Rata kapa baba bubu zuri, musukuturi mama, katala mama mama. I'm gonna hands on you. Keep your hands up. anointing with oil, the fear is going to go. So worthy, worthy is the, the Lord's glory is right here. Thank you for the cross. A new day has come your way. A new day has come your way. Thank you for the A new day has come your way. The anointing is right here. The anointing. 
the anointing is here. God told me to anoint you, and the anointing does something. The anointing is doing something. Something is coming your way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day for you. Father, give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Receive. 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 Ashes, watch. That's the glory. If you're watching me online, stretch your hands with my hand as I pray. I release life over you right now. Some, there's somebody watching me online. You are dealing with depression and suicide. God is delivering you from suicide right now. In the name of Jesus, I command suicide to go. Right now, depression to go. Fear. You're not going to lose your property. I cancel foreclosure right now. I cancel foreclosure. I cancel foreclosure. Everybody begin to pray right now. Everybody begin to pray. Everybody begin to pray right now. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Those of you who are not on the altar, begin to pray. Everybody pray right now. Open your mouth and pray. 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 That's the glory. 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 Say, so I receive peace. I receive peace. I reject fear. I receive peace. Receive the peace right now. Receive it. Receive the peace. Receive peace. Receive it now. Receive peace. Receive it now. God bless you. God bless you. It's right here. 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 Receive it. 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 Receive the peace. Receive, 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 receive the peace. Receive, 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 receive peace from the Lord. Receive a new day, a new hour, a new day, a new hour.
I bring you everything. Now begin to thank God for your miracle, your blessing. Thank him. Thank him. Lord, I give you my heart. Thank him. Open your mouth and thank him. I give you my soul. I live. Thank you. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. You're worthy. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm If I close this service, just worship him now. Worship him. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm aware, Lord, have your way. Thank him because your mountain is removed. Your crisis is fixed. Your condition is better. Give me a shout of praise. Come on, give me a shout of praise. Give me a shout of praise. You can do better than that for Jesus. Come on, church, you can do better than for Jesus. You can do better for Jesus. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm aware. Yes, Lord. Wave your hands to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Lord, I give you my heart. Give him praise. I give you my soul. Give him praise. Give him praise. I live give him for praise. you. Alone. Give him praise. Every breath that Can you open your mouth? Sense what God is doing right now. There's something that God is doing right now. God is doing something. Sister Marsha, give me seven envelopes. Can you bring her? Bring Kathy right here. Somebody bring her here. Brother Wendell, bring her quickly. Josh, help her. I will give you all my prayers. You got to move quickly, gentlemen. You alone. Power of God is so strong on us. I long to. May the Lord deliver you from the demon that was sent to destroy you and your family. He wanted to sacrifice your kids too. Fire! I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to. Give you all my praise. 
There is seven people here. You alone. You're gonna sow a seed called unstoppable. You're gonna sow a seed called unstoppable in this revival. You're sowing into this revival. There are seven people here that will sow a seed of ninety dollars. It's called unstoppable. Come take the envelope. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Act on your faith. And I worship you. Seven people. Almighty. The seed is called unstoppable. God bless you. There is none like you. God bless you. I worship you. God bless you. Oh, Prince of Peace. Keep coming. That is what I long to do. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. I worship you. Catchers, I train you what to do. When somebody there come forward, no please, you gotta pay attention. We don't need surprises. Thank you so much. Okay, one of you guys stand here. One of you guys stand over here. You gotta be in the spirit, guys. I don't have to tell you what to do every time. Thank you. Let me get three more people that will sow that seed. God bless you. You're sowing into this revival. This is a, this is a ground. God is moving. Someone say amen. You are to discern. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. If you're watching online, you can sow that seed too. in five minutes just thank God right now no one else can touch my heart like you do I can search through all eternity Lord and find there is none like you oh there is none like you, no one, no one, no one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search through all eternity long and find there is none like. So I 
sing praises praise to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and great. Your children. 